Hello, I'm your friend, Teacher Sam. Today, we embark on a journey to break free from the chains of Google Translate every time we speak English. Now, don't get me wrong, Google Translate is a fantastic tool, but it's just that, a tool. It should supplement your language learning, not become a crutch. Over-reliance on it can lead to a lack of confidence in your own language skills and hamper your growth as a language learner. So why is this a problem? Well, translation tools can't always capture the nuances and idioms of a language leading to awkward or incorrect sentences. Our aim is to help you become self-reliant, to trust in your own abilities to understand and communicate in English. We'll explore different methods and strategies to reduce your dependence on translation tools. So, are you ready to take this journey with me? Let's dive right in. First, understand that language is not just about words, but also about context. Picture this, you're in a conversation with a friend. They say something that word for word translates into a sentence that leaves you puzzled. This happens because language isn't a simple equation where you plug in a word and get an equivalent one in another language. It's a rich tapestry painted with hues of culture, emotions, and shared experiences. Google Translate, as useful as it is, might not always capture this intricacy. It's a tool programmed to translate words, not emotions or cultural nuances. For instance, a phrase like break a leg might leave a non-English speaker baffled if translated literally, but in context, it's a wish for good luck. So, when learning English, try to grasp the context in which words and phrases are used. This understanding will help you communicate more effectively and authentically. Remember, context is key when it comes to language. Uh, next, we need to talk about vocabulary. It's the backbone of any language, and English is no exception. But here's a crucial point to remember. Learning vocabulary isn't about memorizing a list of words and their translations. It's about understanding their meaning, usage, and context. So, how do we do this? Let's start with immersion. This is a method that mimics how we naturally learn our first language. It involves surrounding yourself with English in your daily life. Listen to English songs, watch English movies, read English books and articles. The more exposure you get, the more words and phrases you'll pick up naturally. It's like learning to swim by jumping into the deep end, daunting at first, but incredibly effective. Next, let's talk about reading. Reading is an excellent way to learn new words and understand their context. When you come across a word you don't know, Try to figure out its meaning from the surrounding sentences before reaching for the dictionary. This method encourages active learning and helps you remember words and their meanings longer. And of course, we can't forget listening. Listening to native speakers use the language is invaluable. It helps you get a feel for the rhythm, the intonation, and the way words are used in everyday conversation. Podcasts, radio shows, or even audiobooks are great resources to get started. Now, here's an important tip. As you learn new words, try to use them in sentences right away. This isn't just about learning definitions, it's about understanding how to use these words in a real-world context. The more you practice, the more natural it will feel. Remember, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. It's okay to take your time. The goal isn't to know all the words, but to be able to communicate effectively. And that's how you build your vocabulary. Practice is crucial here. So immerse yourself, read widely, listen actively, and most importantly, keep practicing. The more you use English, the more comfortable you'll become. Now let's tackle grammar and sentence structure. Grammar, my friends, is the backbone of any language. It's the system that holds your words together, giving them order and meaning. So when you're learning English, it's crucial to grasp the basics of grammar and sentence structure. Let's start with the basic components of a sentence. In English, every complete sentence must have a subject and a predicate. The subject is the person, place, or thing that the sentence is about, while the predicate tells us what the subject is doing or what's happening to it. For instance, in the sentence, the cat is sleeping. The cat is the subject, and is sleeping is the predicate. Next, let's look at verb tenses. English has three main tenses, past, present, and future. Each of these tenses has four aspects, simple, continuous, perfect, and perfect continuous. Understanding these tenses and aspects will help you express time accurately in your sentences. For example, I eat is in the present simple tense, while I am eating 
is in the present continuous tense. Now you might be wondering why should I bother learning all these rules when I can just use Google Translate? Well, the answer is simple. Google Translate, while a helpful tool is not perfect, it often makes mistakes, especially with complex sentences and idiomatic expressions. Furthermore, relying on Google Translate can stunt your language growth. It's like using a crutch when you're learning to walk. Sure, it helps in the beginning, but if you keep using it, you'll never learn to walk on your own. The same goes for learning English. You need to take off the training wheels and start practicing. Read English books, watch English movies, and speak in English as much as you can. Remember, it's okay to make mistakes. In fact, making mistakes is an integral part of learning. So, don't be afraid to mess up. Just keep practicing and learning from your errors. With consistent practice, you'll soon find that you don't need Google Translate to form sentences. We've covered a lot today, haven't we? We've delved into the importance of context in understanding English and how learning vocabulary in a meaningful way can help you gain confidence in your language skills. We've also discussed the significance of improving grammar and sentence structure to give you a more comprehensive grasp of the language. It may seem like a lot, but don't feel overwhelmed. Everything we've discussed today is part of a journey, a journey to improve your English skills and become less dependent on Google Translate. It's important to remember that this journey is not a sprint, but a marathon. It takes time, practice, and patience. Start implementing these strategies in your daily life. Practice them consistently, and you'll gradually notice an improvement in your English proficiency. Remember, the goal is not to eliminate Google Translate completely, but to rely on it less and less. Every step you take towards improving your English brings you one step closer to that goal. Keep practicing and you'll get there. Until next time, this is Teacher Sam signing off.